Hey everyone, it's Dallas here again with you. Thanks for coming back to my channel, I appreciate you. Real quick, I wanted to let you know, I now have a newsletter. So if you're clicking here from my newsletter, you already know about it, but if you're here just because you've been on my YouTube channel for a bit, please go to my website, which I will link below, and right on the front page, you can sign up for my Brush Club newsletter. Now on the newsletter, I like to give extra tips, I like to check in with you once in a while, and sometimes you will get free content early. So sometimes before it even hits YouTube, I'll give my Brush Club people a piece of video content or some other goodie. So be sure to get on that. And we're going to jump into this video right now. This video is about three different things that you can do this year that will help you or your kids be more creative. Are you ready? Numero uno is no more coloring books. I mean you too, mom. Coloring books are kind of a way to sort of turn off your mind. They don't really engage what's actually in your head and you're not getting what's in your head down on paper. So same goes for kids. I know I really started with a controversial one here, but I think it's really important. I think what is a better use of your money is something I'm gonna mention here next. So don't get me wrong, I think coloring books have their place and the illustrators that make coloring books are really great, but it's not drawing and it's not really helping you work your mind and work your recall and your memory muscles. So if you really want to make it worth your time, I say do something else that's creative and I'll let you know about that next. All right, here is my alternative to coloring books. This is called a sketchbook. So a sketchbook is wonderful because it has pages and pages and pages of blank paper that you get to fill up with whatever you want. So for a child who is really craving a creative outlet, this is pure gold. All you need to supply is brushes or colored pencils or a different type of medium that you're comfortable with in your home and they can sketch whatever's in their mind and sketch it out on paper. Sometimes if my kids are telling me about something and I really cannot picture what they're describing to me, sometimes I will ask them to go try to draw a picture of it and then show it to me. So this can be a great tool for around the house, communicating with your children that maybe don't write yet, but also that they have a creative outlet to just doodle out whatever is in their mind on paper. All right, so other than sketchbooks around the house, I really like to provide stuff like copy paper or mixed media paper, newsprint, brown craft paper, things that you don't mind the children getting out on their own and marking on. So do provide them with blank paper, loose paper around the house, and a variety of mark making tools. The first one being their palette, they've probably already filled. And stay tuned for my channel actually because I will have a video out soon on how to fill a palette with your whole range of watercolor tube colors. So to go along with your palette, you're gonna need to have brushes around and a water vessel, something they can wash their brush out with, as well as I like to have actually these sheets of ripped off, folded up paper towels around. So they really don't have an excuse for having all of their materials not ready when you have stuff like this lying around the house. Okay, the other thing that I keep around the house is little pieces of vine charcoal. I keep it in this little tray like this so that they can just grab the size out that they want and they can start doodling on their paper. This one though is a bit messy, so if you are not prepared for messes, have this be something that they need to come and ask you to use first before they dig into it. So the vine charcoal is one supply that I really like to have on newsprint or brown craft paper because with those we can just spread a really large sheet over our table and I can tape it down at the sides and they can scribble in their area just right in front of them. And I have three kids. They are ages eight, six, and four now. 
So they're kind of at that age where I trust them to be independent enough that we can sit down and do a drawing time like that together. And the great thing about newsprint and craft paper is at the end of our drawing session, we can actually just fold it up and even wrap the tape up in it and throw it away. And if you want to take pictures before, you definitely can. But to me, that's a pretty easy cleanup and it's just done. The thing that I want you to consider for young children is to have an area that they can go to and that they can access to get to the materials. So if you are comfortable with having pastels and some vine charcoal and some paints, even crayons at their level to go and grab themselves, do because whatever they're allowed to do on their own, they'll be that much more likely to go and do in their free time. So let them have an accessible area where they can grab things out by themselves. And with my kids, I like to have actually a low table so that it's easy for them to grab those materials and get down at the low table and do what they're going to do. The third and final thing, which isn't actually a physical thing that I can show you, but it's something you need to prepare for, is that you need to give your kids enough free time in their day. And you, the parent, if you are wanting to learn how to draw, you will have to schedule in some time, some uninterrupted time, that you can have to explore this concept and to practice. Practice and free downtime is really key for helping your creativity kick in. And if you think about it, if you have a lot of things scheduled in your day, you're anxious about getting on to the next thing. So afternoon times are really great to have some free drawing time. And again, you can provide your kids with the materials and sometimes they'll just pick it up and do it themselves. All right, everyone, I hope these three things helped you with how to be more creative this year. Um, if you need a list of supplies that I have tested and I approve of, and you're wondering even where to start with buying supplies, I will link in the description some art supplies that are my favorite for your homeschool. All right. If there are any questions you have, please leave them below. I love talking back to you. So ask me a question. If you just don't even know where to start, let's start a conversation about maybe what's the right first step for you. Okay. Happy drawing, everyone. Talk to you later. Bye.